Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope the audio and video is coming through just fine. Um, today we are jo joined by uh, Brad Bernard. Um, goes by the name My Wonder List. Uh, Brad is uh, visiting Bangalore and he's just flown in from Africa. And uh, Brad has a specialty of traveling to some of the world's most dangerous destinations. Uh, Brad has um, danced with corpses in um, in Africa. He has lived with uh, sea gypsies, and uh, he's also got uh, tattoos uh, hammered into him by the head hunting tribes in Borneo. Um, so Brad is going to be talking to us about uh, his experiences in some of the most dangerous places in the world. Um, all right, Brad. So uh, over to you. Let's just um, have like a open ended conversation here. So um, let's start with. Um, can you describe some of your most recent experiences? And um, I understand that you're coming in from Africa, so um, there's a lot that you experienced there, so I'd like our viewers to know about this. Yeah, I, I still am starting to uh, feel better after that Kalahari experience. Uh, I think I got concerned probably every day uh, from from that situation, but uh, yeah, I mean a, a few weeks ago. I was uh, living in uh, Clip Town uh, Not Cape Town. It's it's one of Johannesburg's most dangerous slums it, It's it's a place where you could probably expect to get mugged You know within six seconds or so of walking in there, you know, maybe three seconds if you're white um, But it's 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 really never been a place where anybody is really asked to as to stay, it's the setting of uh, of District Nine, and so I wanted to go there and, and live in one of those um, corrugated metal shacks for for about a week, and understand you know just exactly what it's like to live there. Right, I it, it's 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 quite a fascinating area because it's a, it's a police uh, no go zone. There are you know essentially no no laws governing the governing the area, and as such, it has a lot of very interesting history. Uh, I mean, this is where Mandela hid out when they were planning some of the uh, anti-apartheid um, movement, and where a lot of that sort of stuff, uh, you know, uh, incubated, if you will, because that's where, you know, there was sort of freedom from, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the government government oppression in that situation. Now, apartheid in, you know, in its formal sense is, is over, but, you know, I just wanted, I wanted to go down and see, you know, what it's actually, you know, what it's like to live there. It's, it's very, um, it's a tough place. I, I, I would say most families live on the equivalent of about 50 to 70 U.S. dollars a month uh, for, you know, for a family of four. And, uh, you know, one of the one of the hardest parts, I think, in, in in that experience was, you know, it's just simply convincing people that I am on their level. Uh, I, you know, I had all kinds of people, you know, come up to me and say, hey, you know, rich white man, buy me a drink um, and, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I had to explain that, hey, I, I sold everything I have to, you know, to, to, to be here living with you guys and understand your world. And, you know, they, they just couldn't believe me. They said, you have, uh, you know, you have a plastic card in your wallet. You stick in an ATM and it just spits out unlimited amounts of money. And, you know, that was just, and I said, no, I, I don't. You know, I'm, I'm dumpster diving with you. I, you know, my, my best meal this week was, you know, uh, quite honestly, the, uh, the half-eaten fish and chips meal that was, that was tossed out at the restaurant uh, because that was, that was, that was, uh, you know, quite tasty, but I, you know, I'm here with you. I'm stuck in the same situation, and it took a lot to get, you know, to get through those sort of barriers of acceptance um, from their, uh, you know, if you will, prejudice about, you know, about me coming in and, uh, you know, and thinking I had a, a whole lot of money. But it was a, it was a, a very difficult place to to stay safe. I had to be, you know, just super observant about everything. You know, I had to I had to notice all of the nuances. I had to meet all of the elders of the community as well as, you know, meet all of the you know the drug lords that you know essentially control this sort of sort of web mm -hmm. of activity. And I had to you know just sort of you know watch around. And, and I would use a lot of the same things that I've I've learned you know being in dangerous places and travel and 
you know, when I saw, you know, two or three people all looking at me at the same time or in a coordinated manner, um, you know, kind of looking a little bit like, you know, the sharks after you chum the water, um, you know, I, you know, have to realize very quickly I'm the chum here and, and, you know, I need to stay, you know, I need to stay safe and, and, you know, get with my, uh, connections and, you know, talk to, you know, Sydney, you know, or something, you know, some shop owner that, you know, is one of the elders and just pull him in and shake his hand and, you know, start talking to him. And as soon as I do that, it, you know, gives everybody the signal that, you know, it's, you know, this is, you know, this is, you know, to protect me, if you will, that, you know, I'm, I'm part of this community and not an outsider. So I had to be kind of hyper vigilant about that, but it was, it was really fascinating seeing things, you know, if you will, from the, from the other side. And it, it was, it was, it was super scary. There was, you know, there were shootings every night, you know, yeah. uh, the, the, um, tomorrow is not, you know, is never a guarantee there. And when you put your, you know, always starving and when you put yourself in that situation, in that mindset, you can almost see, you know, how and why, you know, people justify some of the, some of the craziest things. I, I remember that there was a, um, there was a cop that was in there investigating. I think it was investigating a marijuana case. Uh, the kids jumped him, and yeah, he was by himself. I'm not sure why. Kids jumped him. They shot him, uh, and then they took the gun and they, you know, they broke into the church, which was right next door to me. They opened fire, um, and you know, the kids are running around this uh, this this slum with with a you know with live ammunition. Um, you know, and, and the general mentality around the community was, well, that cop was pretty stupid to come here, you know, and, you know, it's almost like, you know, he kind of deserved it, you know, and, you know, why on earth is he, you know, creating all these problems for us? But that's the, you know, and that's the general, men, you know, general mentality uh, of the situation when you're sort of stuck in the middle of it. And I, I have to say, you know, I, I have to sort of sympathize a little bit with that being stuck in the situation and now having, you know, my life threatened because of it. Um, you know, you, you, a lot of things become clear when you, uh, I guess, look at them from the other, from the other perspective. Yeah, it's true. Uh, so, you know, you spoke about um, visiting Clip Town and uh, about it being a very dangerous town, especially the slums of it. Um, what is your motivation to visit these places? What is it you're trying to find? Is there something that you're trying to understand? Um, is there like a deeper intention as to uh, you know why exactly do you go into these towns? Well, I, I guess I've traveled for about 10 years and you know done some fairly extreme stuff, you know, if you will, push the boundaries uh, and the limits and uh, of my fear and uh, understanding of the world. And I guess throughout throughout that those ten years, I've realized you know various various things um, that uh, are not obvious to me when I'm back home. You know, I, you know, realize how small the window is that the media gives you to the world, and how different things actually are when you you know go on the other side and look at it. And part of this recent journey was was really to explore the farthest reaches of you know, of the human mind, of the human experience, um, the farthest reaches of, of, of fear, the farthest reaches of, of good and evil, um, you know, the, the farthest reaches of us, you know, versus them, and all of these sort of conflict areas that are, you know, that are created that make us scared to leave the couch on a daily basis, um, and, and just go right into the heart of things and, you know, see what it's actually like. Um, because, you know, what I've found is when, when you put yourself there and understand the situation um, and understand the mentality, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of things make sense. You know, I, I've written a lot about, um, you know, the, the folly of good intentions, right, of, you know, a lot of uh, aid organizations will go out there and try to, you know, try to help, but, you know, not really realize the situation people are in not really realize the consequences of, of, of some of these things and actually, you know, start, you know, causing more problems than, than helping. And, you know, what I really wanted to understand is just, is just to, to give, first of all, myself a clear picture of what, on, you know, what on earth is going on. What is this thing that I fear? You know, what is, you know, 
what is what is evil as as it's been defined or showed me, and it, a, a miraculous thing mm. seems to happen as as I go, you know, to that far perspective. These you know the 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 idea of good and evil, the idea of right and wrong, um, the idea of fear. These all you know the, these constructs all seem to dissolve when you mm-hmm. when when you look at things from that other perspective and look at uh, you know look at the the, the way people live and the way that the situations force them to to make decisions that that, that, that look very um, you know that don't look very rational mm-hmm. from here yeah you know, so yeah I mean I, I just you know uh, my, my objective is just to was just to go to all you know and I, you know I went to war zones you know I went to you know uh, live in refugee a refugee camp in Iraq mm-hmm. with the Yazidi people, you know, um, one of, you know, or, or considered to be the, the oldest, re- you know, ongoing religion. And, and it happens to be the, the same uh, group of people that ISIS is trying to wipe off the map. Uh, but going to actually live with them in the refugee camp and understand exactly, you know, what it is about these people. Why should, you know, why should the world care about, you know, care about these people? Um, you know, uh, because I think the in a lot of ways, the reaction to to seeing some of this stuff is okay. Let's let's bomb. You know, let's put more bombs out there. And, and to be honest with you, I think that my biggest anxiety being in that situation was the was the potential for you know erroneous military action um, or you know bombing or retaliation from from that perspective of you know just things things kind of going awry. The, the people in the situations around me were. You know, some of the some of the friendliest, most outgoing, mm-hmm. you know, uh, outgoing people that I, that I've ever met. You know, I, I guess I remember um, just you know I remember being in 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 Kurdistan and some kid gave me a, a piece of, you know, he sold me a piece of gum for you know what was it the equivalent of, of 20, 20 cents U S. and you know I gave him something like you know a quarter, and I took the gum and started walking off and he you know he chased me all the way back to the hotel. All the way back to the hotel, uh, and you know, I turn around. He's trying to give me the change, and I say, "Oh no, no, keep it. This is a, this is a, this is a beggar kid. This is a street kid." I said, "No, no, no, take it." And he looks at me, and he looks at the change, and and he's he almost starts crying, and he he does not know it's not his change, uh, and I won't take it, and he, he just can't reconcile that in his head. He can't really understand that concept of, you know. Of, of wanting to enjoy something, you know, or taking something that's not his. And the kid left, he left the, you know, he left the change on the ground and, and left. Wow. Uh, he, you know, he, and, and you know, you, you'd be surprised how, how, how poorly, you know, the media in some of these, in some of these places categorizes things, you know, especially when it, when it gets categorized into issues of, you know, of right and wrong. And, you know, we have to, you know, we have to win this battle at any cost, and um, you know, I think the people that are that are on the ground sort of sort of get lost. When I before doing that, a lot of people said, you know, it's you shouldn't even go to a war zone. It's just completely immoral to travel there. Is is what a few people wow. said. But I, you know, the people in Kurdistan were absolutely wonderful. Oh, it's 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 really amazing to know that you know, uh, in spite of everything going on around them, there's still like a sense of innocence. Uh, in all of them, and you know, there's uh, at at the core of it, they're, they're still good people. Yeah, I think that you know one of the things I'm beginning to see is that you know I think we are. Yeah, uh, you know, more and more I see that you know we're all essentially good people at heart. You know, just motivated by bad things. Mm-hmm. And once you strip away the ideology, once you strip away the you know the concept of right and wrong. Once you of us for you know of, of us versus them and you versus me and and once you strip away all of these things that we're trying to fight for or you know attach ourselves to, you know all those uh, all those areas of conflict and tension and uh, and danger just sort of seem to evaporate and you know you can look people in the face and you know essentially see a mirror right yeah, mm-hmm. i see more of myself in them in you know in some of the most you know bizarre places the people that are most different from me that don't even speak my language I, you know i i see more of myself in in those people 
you know, than I do in, you know, in, in sitting around and, and having a political discussion, you know, with somebody that, you know, doesn't necessarily tell you too much about that, you know, about who that person is. But when it's, when you strip away those layers, you see all kinds of, all kinds of interesting things, so. Um, wow, that's quite, quite a beautiful story. Um, one, one thing that I'm really interested to know is, uh, you know, most, most of these places that you visit, um, they, they're barely shown in media, you know, like um, media usually covers these stories up and they make, they make it sound like, um, you know, that they make it sound like they're the bad guys. Um, how do you actually gain access to information? How do you actually reach out to the right people? And how do you actually find out more about these places and get to them? Um, it's pretty difficult sometimes to get the stories. And as a general rule, I can't ever find the right information online because, you know, whatever, you know, whatever is online is, is going to be, you know, somewhat, you know, somewhat commercialized yeah. and, you know, turned into a touristy thing. Uh, you know, when I was, you know, in the, in the Kalahari, I, you know, I, I wanted to meet a shaman. I wanted to earn, learn and understand what, what exactly is this, you know, that shamanism actually is because, you know, I've heard all of the outrage in media, you know, essentially about, you know, the, the witchcraft mm -hmm. uh, perspective in Africa and how, you know, uh, you know, how uh, the perception that that's, you know, very bad because it's, it's sort of fighting the fact that we, you know, are trying to get drugs to the kids and, you know, and, and help them, you know, and, you know, Western medicine is the only answer and, you know, that witch doctors stand in the way, you know, of fighting that. So I, I said, I really want to understand what, you know, what this principle is. So it took, you know, it took a week, you know, it took, it took over a week to actually, you know, talk to the right person. You know, I, I had to go to the, you know, to the antique store. I had to go to the museum curators, you know, and say, do you have, you know, do you have any contacts? Do you, you know, do you have anybody I can talk to and then start, you know, start moving toward, toward this, you know, toward the source. And I just had to take the jump and go out to the Kalahari, which this is the, uh, nah, this is the hottest time of year in the Kalahari. Yeah, there's no cell phone service. There's, there's just no nothing. You have to essentially drive by a fence that is the official designation of where civilization ends. And after that, you're on your own. So, you know, without really having a specific person to talk to, I just had to go out there and, you know, just just go out there and, and survive. But once I, you know, once I was there, I started, you know, started talking to people and, and get past some of the, some of the tourist barriers that, that we have, you know, um, it's a, it, it's a tough place out there. You know, you have, alcoholism beyond repair you have you know just desperation of you know hey we have you know a, a tourist here uh or a white man like you know like you know give me your money type stuff and it, it took a lot to to really get through that but then also you know start talking to some of the shamans and you know eventually find the the trainer of the shamans and a, a guy who speaks no English and, you know, explain to him in pictures that I drew on the ground exactly what, you know, what I want to do and what I want to understand. And that I was there with kind of good intentions of, you know, not taking this and, you know, splattering it all over the news and, you know, saying, hey, look how silly these people are. But, you know, really, really trying to understand this. And it's, it's just really... Um, it's really interesting and fascinating the whole the, the whole shamanic uh, experience because you know I was there for, what four days had to had to train for all of this and, and really you know try to understand that it's completely the opposite of Western you know the Western perspective on, on on things you know in the way we would say you know uh, smoking causes you know causes heart disease you know they they would say hey both of these are actually caused by you know by an imbalance that you have. Um, that you, uh, you know, that is, that is making you want to smoke, that is also, you know, going to, you know, eventually, you know, give you heart disease and oh, all these other problems. So essentially get back to the source and, and, and fix that and align yourself rather than just chase down, chase down and try to solve all the symptoms with drugs. Um, you know, so it's just a very interesting perspective to look at, you know, what, you know, they're trying they're trying to do and that it's 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 really valuable for the community because you know these uh these these shamans these these witch doctors really do you know 
understand the currents of tension in the community. They understand, you know, psychologically what's happening with people. You know, they understand that you, you can't keep things, you know, boiled in and, you know, inside or it's going to explode in your community and, you know, cause all kinds of problems. And it's a really, really critical part of, you know, keeping their, keeping their culture together. It's not, they're not fighting Western medicine. They're, they're taking a different approach. So um, a lot of these things, when you get to the other side of them and really understand actually what's going on, you really understand that it's, you know, a lot of these conflicts are a conflict of good intentions. And, you know, it's not necessarily right or wrong. It's, you know, hey, we're both right if you look at it from the right perspective. And that's kind of what, kind of what I wanted to do uh, in my writing and in, in the journey, understand, you know, all those contradictions, break all the rules, be, go on the other side of fear. Um, and you know, see, see what, it, what it's really like, shed, shed a lot of my, my own preconceptions. And, you know, the, the only way to travel to some of these places, the only way to connect with people in the way that I need to is to, um, you know, shed all of the uh, need to protect myself and, uh, you know, just go talk to people one on one. Because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's, everybody's human you know, to, when you talk to them the right way. Uh, and and you you know you'd be surprised you, when you when you sit down and have a conversation with somebody who who you know previously wanted to kill you because of what they thought about you uh, based on what they read in the newspaper and you you know you're sitting across the table and just saying you know help help me understand I'm not here to kill you and and it's just a, a realization that you know that 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 comes to you know everybody in the room that you know gosh whatever what everybody told us was was. You know, it's, it's just not true. You know, but we can once you connect on a human basis. You know, all of these things tend to tend to go away. It's just the the barriers we place between ourselves and others prevent us from really understanding. So, so Brad, I, I understand that you're also writing a book. Um, are these experiences, um, you uh, things that you will be sharing in your book? Do you feel that um, some of the experiences that you've gone through uh, should be experienced by more people across the world? Um, do you feel they should be uh, contained and protected? Um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, okay, so the, let me uh, let, let me address the most uh, relevant one. I don't recommend anybody doing any of this stuff. Okay, <laughs> um, it's it, it, it it's very dangerous. There's a lot you know. There's a lot you have to understand about you know about keeping your sa yourself safe and and how these things work. Um, a, a, absolutely, it's for you know. Uh, I'm working on a book, and you know, it's it, it's a book. You know, that you know pushes myself um, to really, really understand the world and understand uh, you know the perspectives beyond my own fear, beyond my own boundaries, uh, beyond what I've been told is right and wrong, beyond what uh, I've been told is good and evil. Um, to to understand and sort of triangulate those. Those perspectives. So yeah, it, it will be definitely something I will write about and share. I, I mean, I definitely think all these experiences are things we can, you know, that that shed a light on humanity that we don't hardly ever see. Um, well, we have a question coming in from Sandhya. Uh, this is a, a very interesting question. It's a question that I also wanted to ask you uh, later on in this conversation. Um, what has been the best takeaway from? Uh, what has been the best takeaway from such adventurous trips for you? Um, for me, I think it's that the the battles that I that I am trying to fight are are really um, ten, you know tend to be quite an illusion, and that the the things that I'm really holding on to in terms of pre, you know in terms of my prejudices or the things that I understood growing up are really reflected you know throughout society. Um, you know, I, I, I've learned that when you, uh, you know, when you look at conflict from both sides, that um, you know that it all it all sort of sort of balances out. Uh, when you stay with families on the Palestinian side of Hebron, and you stay with you know, and you stay with uh, families on the, on the on the Israeli side. And you see that they're both, you know, they both have the sort of an institutionalized mindset, right? They both act and behave like there's no way out of this situation but to 
kill the other people and that they don't even have a face to put with that. Uh, you see the, um, you know, the folly of, you know, essentially what we, what we are all trying to fight for. You know, you see the, you see the contradiction uh, of all of these things. And in a lot of ways, it's, you know, the refreshing part of traveling is being able to step above that, saying, hey, you know, this isn't a battle we need to win or lose. This isn't a battle I need to, I need to, I need to fight. This isn't an argument I, I, that, that's even worth, you know, that's even worth talking about. And, you know, there's types of experiences when you put yourself in another perspective, um, in another environment, um, you can see yourself, you know, quite differently. And you can see yourself just a little bit more objectively um, rather than, you know, how our own biases, we, we tend to look in the mirror and, and see what we want to see, you know. Well, very insightful. Uh, someday I hope uh, Brad answered your question on a very philosophical level. <laughs> um, this uh, this uh, particular webinar is slightly different um, from the, from most of the other webinars that we've hosted here, you know. We, are, we actually wanted to understand um, more about Brad and we wanted to understand, uh, he's, he's a very different travel blogger, uh, you know. Uh, very rarely do you find people who go to South Africa, not visit Cape Town, but, you know, throw themselves into the most dangerous slums of Johannesburg instead, you know. Very rarely do you find people traveling into the Middle East actually to go into refugee camps to, like, you know, understand the lives of the people there. So, um, uh, you know, Brad's here talking to us about some of his experiences. Um, so, Brad, um, just to wrap up here a bit, um, are there any... Um, tips that you would like to give to some of the bloggers out there who would be interested in exploring, um, uh, you know, the areas that you're interested in, uh, any, any tips you could give them to point them in that direction, some, uh, some caution as well. Um, well, you know, I would, you know, I would essentially, uh, you know, the, the question of safety, I guess, comes up mm -hmm. um, quite a bit, you know, and, you know, just, just to touch on that a little bit, you know, take everybody's input from, you know, from their own perspective, right? And don't necessarily treat it as, as right and wrong. I go to a lot of these places and, and people say, oh, it's, it's dangerous, just don't go. And I try to get a little bit beneath that to understand, you know, what, what are the, you know, what sort of, what sort of dangers and what sort of things should I, mm -hmm. should I be looking out for? Because, you know, danger that is economically driven, um, you know, from, you know, you having, or, or people thinking you have a lot of money versus, you know, the general population of where you're going, uh, you know, living in poverty, you know, it, it just, you know, it creates a, a huge uh, perceived opportunity for people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from their perspective, you're running out with, with millions of dollars in your pocket, right? And you can, you can really, you know, equate that, you know, you pull your, you know, you look at your phone. And in Clip Town, my phone was the equivalent of, what, a year and a half of, of salary for an entire family, right? And, and, you know, that's just quite, you know, that's quite an, an interesting perspective when you think about that, right? Um, how much, you know, how much that can help them. And, you know, when you look at your own perspective, you know, you can say, well, if you're sitting down next to Bill Gates, you know, a, a lot of people would say, Hey man, you've got trillions and trillions of dollars. Just give me a million. I could do so much, you know, so much more with that. But you know, we all we all tr tend to treat these things, you know, the same way, and it's it's all really uh, quite you know part of us. But you know, you have economic issues, you know, which uh, differentials, which you know, cause a great deal of, of danger. You know, you have ideological uh, problems where you know. You know Americans, you know, for example, I can give you that perspective, you know, go, you know, to the Middle East and there's a perception that, you know, I'm there to change people or to convince people, you know, to that they need to be democratic or they need to agree with American things or that I'm there to convince them of something. And, you know, when you when you really, really understand what, you know, what that ideological um tension is i mean they're not wanting to kill me they're wanting to kill my mentality mm -hmm. right they're trying to you know which they perceive as sort of boxing them into you know to, to not being able to, to to live in their own way um you know but it's you know those are very easy to break down and all you do is just say i'm, I'm here to understand i really want to understand and 
when you when you when you talk to people and you um, you know you you let them know you're interested in them and you have the ability to tell their story, I'm, I'm telling you all all barriers seem to break down and they become invested in you all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it's you know it, it's in their best interest to do that. So you know w one thing that I do with with any danger is I look at it from the opposite perspective, right? You know, not from what do I need to do to protect myself. I say, why do people want to hurt me? Why do people mm. want, you know? And um, that helps me put myself in the mindset of them, you know, so that I can, I know which barriers to sort of break down and, and, and be able to connect, you know, connect with people. But, you know, so many discussions, um, so many arguments in this world are, are just simply based, based on different perspectives. Wow. So. All right. Um, so thank you, Brad. Thanks for, you know, giving us a very insightful um, a discussion into your experience as a travel blogger and your experiences from traveling to some of the most dangerous places in the world. Uh, guys, um, we'll be open for questions for the next two minutes. Uh, if you have any questions that, uh, that you would like Brad to answer on this webinar, you could uh, type them into the small questions box on the right side of the screen. Um, if you would like to take the questions on to Twitter, you can send over questions to Brad. His Twitter handle is at the rate my wander list. You can hashtag Trapezal there so we can follow them and track your questions and we can also give our comments. Um, all right, so it looks like we're not having any questions coming in at this moment. All right, all right, guys, have a good day, have a great weekend, and uh, again, thank you, Brad, for thank you. sharing your experiences with us. And uh, see you guys on the other side. Bye. <laughs>